Hello, everyone. This is JD Calderon, and today I'm talking to Derwin Robinson, an awesome, incredible artist. <laughs> Thanks. Listen, I met this guy, what, maybe three years ago, four years ago at a show, oh, yeah. right? Through a yeah. mutual friend. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I, I, before I even met you, I was walking by your table. This guy's stuff is nice. This guy's stuff is nice. I don't know well, if I want to talk to him. It looks expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> then I got introduced and I was like, all right, you know, and found out that not only is his work nice, Derwin is cool, which is even more important, you know. You. So, Derwin, yeah. tell me, tell, tell everybody about yourself and okay. what you're doing. Okay, well, as you said, my name is Derwin Robeson. I am a freelance illustrator. This is my 18th and 19th year being freelance. Uh, I'm from, you know, from the Bronx. <laughs> I'm a native Bronx boy. And basically, I don't know, where do I start? I mean, I can tell you myself, let's say it like this. Um, I've been drawing as long as I can remember. Uh, and, you know, when I was around 14, 15, I thought maybe I want to do this professionally. And then I applied to art and design. Yeah, when I was around 14, and so that crushed me. But then I said, you know what? Nah, I'm going to do this, right? You no. Know, so I just said, I'll just have to work harder. And I started teaching myself. I started going everywhere I could. I would go to comic book conventions, and I was always, you know, meeting people. And can you give me some advice? And I got some great advice from great people. And then, uh, uh, cut a long story short, basically, uh, I met this guy. Who became my best friend, and he was from Japan. He was here going to the Pratt Institute. His name was Kazuo Matsushima, and you know, he became like my heterosexual life mate. Right. So I mean, <laughs> we were like inseparable. And when his stint was up, when his when he was done with uh, college, he went back to Japan. So uh, I had the opportunity to go to Japan and hang with him. And like as soon as I, you know, he'd been over there, he'd been doing his thing for a couple of years. And I get off the, I get off the plane. He's like, yo, I got this project um, that you know you could, uh, I think you want to be in on. I was like, you think I'm good enough? Man, this is Japan. He's like, yeah. You, 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 <laughs> and we started doing what's called Dojin over there. Dojin is like independent comic books. Like what you're doing, right. you would be what you would consider Dojin over there, called Dojin. And right. not the sexual kind, right? <laughs> right, right, yeah. And um, so I did that. And then, it, you know, and I'm literally like sleeping, you know, I'm like working and going out sightseeing at night and then working the day. And I had to learn to work at the, you know, that schedule. And then from there, I stayed there for, I extended my trip out there, stayed longer. Did more work, came back here, started work with him over Skype because Skype you can share these really large files. And I worked over the next two years. Basically, I assisted him and I did everything except work in animation. I did pack design, product design, toy design. We did movie pre-production work or post-production work. We did. Uh, right. I worked on three video games. Um, right. Don't well, let, me, I find them. Let, let me interrupt <laughs> you for a second. So, sure. so details like what what video games did you work on? What okay. what what? So, the first one, okay, so the first one we did, okay, uh, well, you want details. So the first dojin I worked on was this, this, this really, this no shade I'm throwing, but it was like, it was called Beast Works, and it was right. just like I did a couple of pinup illustrations for the for one, and then the next one I wound up doing, wind up doing the cover for it, right? So that was really cool. I wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. The video games, the first one was called Maharoba Stories. I don't know if you can still find it. And I did what's called the incidental artwork. Like when you pause the game, I did the uh, I did the pause screen and I made elements to be animated, uh, like mm -hmm. these little widgets and gears and stuff like that. And then the characters used these pens as weapons. They're fountain pens and they had a nib, a holder, and a feather. And I had to draw so many different nibs and holders and feathers and nibs and holders and feathers, nibs and holders and feathers. I almost had nervous breakdown, wound up getting out so nervous. I got shingles on my face. <laughs> I had to go to the hospital because um, I was the I was the guy in the Florida, so they let me sleep. Uh, so I only <laughs> had to work two days straight. Yeah, wow. if you want to work in Japan, you must be able to work two days straight. Hear me. If you can't, it's not gonna work. And uh, and so I'm working like 22 hours, getting three hours of sleep, and I'm getting phone calls. You gotta change this. You gotta change that. You gotta do that. And I was so nervous then. First two weeks I was gonna die after that, uh, you get used to it. So before mm. I went to Japan, I drew like this. Now you see me, I draw like I'm just like <laughs> right. have a conversation with you while I'm doing it, you know? Because mm -hmm. it's a completely mechanical process. And 
the first was Mahalo Stories. The other two games were Ultimate Racer 1 and 2, and it was a really crappy game for the Japanese iOS. And we did these really cool cars that you had to buy all the different versions of the stacks on top of the cars. So it was right. like, uh, like anti-gravity cars, and there was a version 1, then version 2, which had more stuff put on top, and then version 3 with more stuff, and did that. The movies, I could not name them. <laughs> I still have files of seeing Japanese cinema, it's, you know, it's fine. Um, now, were they live yeah. action or were yeah, they live action. action? They were live action. I am going to throw a little bit of shade because <laughs> I remember one job I had. Uh, there was the character designer for No More Heroes. Okay. I had to do his artwork. And literally, this, you know, he came in and he was the big name. So he basically came in and did this, like, the really, like, sketch, rough sketch with markers to concept art. Right. And I had to turn it into practical art. So it could be turned into three D <laughs> models or costumes or whatever. So I'm sitting there going, trying to interpret his sketches. I'm like, ah, okay, that's a line, that's a line. And mm -hmm. I was cursed off the whole time. <laughs> you know, <I> was like, <laughs> you know, but it was a good job. But the best job I ever had was uh, I had to work on they call you call them Power Rangers, they call them Sentai shows in Japan. Mm -hmm. And there was, I got paid. They sent um, they sent me footage from the stock footage from the set. I had to turn mm -hmm. it into um, coloring book designs, and it was easy job. I, I would just turn the opacity down, put a layer on, really thick coloring book lines. <laughs> it would take me like fifteen minutes. And I got paid twenty five dollars each one. So I was just like, best <laughs> job ever. It was the Dude, one where they had the tiger. My students all know exactly which power it is. It's the one where they had the tiger stripes and the animal stuff. I, don't know. Uh, uh, I just work <laughs> here. And uh, so then more, he started getting more into CCGs, collectible card game stuff. He did mm -hmm. uh, card fight Vanguard and Duel Masters. And I would help him out with that. Uh, he would always say, me, like, Yo, can you help me with anatomy? This? And I would do anatomy. Then he would send me stuff and I would do like just adding in details. And I think so we did that. I did like toy design, like keychains and little like little like super deformed dolls, like of samurai and stuff like, like that. I, I got them all in <laughs> some files. So we, it becomes a blur after a while. And the last thing we did together was a children's book, and it was like uh, you got to spot the differences. And that was good because I, I wound up doing more and more and more of the work. He was the main artist, but I wanted to do cleanups. So I wound up doing shading and I would come in and do the gray skills, which is now my thing I'm known for is doing the shading and stuff. And that's where it came mm -hmm. from. That. And and he fought he that was my dude, right? He fought so hard and actually got my name in the credits on the book and that's not easy to do. Right. So right. that's why when I walk to an anime convention now I get looks from people. I, I had a one uh person who remained nameless literally tell me, oh you're just like a typical black otaku. And I was like, really? <laughs> um, my work is on sale in Kandai, Japan. Kandai is a district where they have all the bookstores. Is your work on sale in Kandai, Japan? No, it's not. Thank you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, guys, you got to have a bit of attitude, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, that's it. And then, um, I had to make a decision because I saw what happens to artists in Japan. If you don't know, they work you. There's literally a word called karoshi, which means death by overwork. Mm, right. And I saw a lot of my contemporaries get sick. There's mm. a reason a lot of uh, Japanese comics end is because the authors literally work themselves to death. Uh, mm. Unfortunately, that's why you won't. There will be no more high school of the dead because the the brother died. Um, wow. Yeah, Ninku, another series from that came out the same time as Ninku came out the same time as Naruto, and it was mm. also a dead comic. And the author was put under so much pressure. That he had a nervous breakdown, had to go in the hospital. Studio wow. quit. All of them wound up hospitalized, right? And I said, you know what? It's kind of not worth it. So I said, I'm here. I was starting to teach at that time. And I said, all right. And it was about that time that I said, uh, I remember I was here in Kaz with Kai Kong Kaz. He would come uh, here and we would, we went to San Diego Comic Con, right? And we met these nice guys from Italy, and we were sitting there doing the portfolio for, for, for reviews. The mm -hmm. first day, we spent all day for portfolio reviews, and I said, man, this is BS. Let's be out. <laughs> all right? I grabbed them, and then we started walking through 
small press alley stuff like that, and we got job offers. I was like, see, this is what we got to do. Mm -hmm. And I think it was New York Comic Con, and back when New York Comic Con and Anime Fest were separated. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm walking through with Kaz, and I'm looking, and there are people who have tables and literally have their sketchbooks open. And then I'm like, I can do this. You know, and I said, yeah, we got to get a table. And that's where it started. I right. said, you know what, let's just get the table and do the table thing and set up. And I said, uh, my thing was, um, the first year I did New York Comic Con, didn't do too well. I was making these little small eight and a half by 11s, all original artwork, and we that don't work. Comic <laughs> <laughs> book conventions, until you have a name. That's the trick. You gotta have a name, then your original artwork sells. If you don't have a name, because mm -hmm. you know, art's subjective. It's nothing, you know, that's how it is. And, um, so that was my first year, but we had the best luck because next to us over here was uh, Maeda-san, right? And he is the he's the creator of La Blue Girl. Legendary Overfeed. I have a little history with that. Yes, I know. Oh yeah, he <laughs> was really cool, and he kind of took us under his wing, and he was like, "Look, it's like this, it's like that. We work like this, we work like that." And so my next year, I came back a little bit better, did a little bit better. Then I had another really good friend of mine. I, she remained nameless. And I saw that she was you know, just doing so well. I said, how do you do that? You know, um, so OK, so it's the big 11 by 17s, all right? And it's got to be the popular characters, OK? Because she's like raking in money. I'm like, I can do it. So then I started doing the big 11 by 17s. And I said, you know what? If you want to pay the rent, draw Wolverines. That's simple, right? Um, there you go. Doing those characters, and the next thing I know, the money starts coming in. Because my initial thought was, as long as I can break even, I'll use it to expose, get exposure for myself. Right. And it worked, and it started working well. And I started getting people coming up to me. Yeah, and that's how I met you, and I met some other people. And mm -hmm. now I get the whole, uh, why aren't you doing more for Marvel DC? And I go, yeah. I should get on that. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. So the problem with being self-taught is there is a bit of a confidence issue where mm -hmm. you like you don't know if you're good enough or not. You know, and then sometimes, but I, I, honestly, it's not so much about how good you are. It's, do you have that work ethic? Because there are plenty of people that are really good mm -hmm. cannot work on a schedule. You know, they oh, just yeah. can't do it. You know, I, mm -hmm. and that's what it comes down to. So pretty much. For the past seven years, six, seven years now, I've been doing the convention circuit. And right. then um, I did that cover for you. I don't know what's coming out or what's up, right? That's <laughs> the next Oswald Kickstarter. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. So soon, oh, soon, soon, soon. Uh -huh. um, and so then I I was at, uh, and I'm going I'm to throw a name out, uh, not to be tacky. Mm -hmm. But so I was doing one really bad convention. Only two people walked in the whole day, this convention, right? <laughs> I was like, wow. But they offered me a table, a free table. And yeah. you know, all these big names supposed to be there. Billy Tooch on them, they didn't show up. But this one guy, Paris Collins, showed up, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. oh, Paris Collins. And he comes up, he looks away, he's like, I said, hi, my name was John Robinson. You know, it's nice to meet you. He said, I know who you are. I came to see you. I was like, really? And so then he puts me to work. I start calling his stuff. And then through him, I meet other people. And then uh, I for I got that's how I got on black because um, basically uh, I know Tim Smith the third right okay uh, I know Tim I know his street name <laughs> I won't put I won't put him on black <laughs> I won't put him on there. right uh, but we both were mutual friends of Coswell right and okay. so I would be at his at Coswell's house in the nineties and we're sitting there. You know, playing PlayStation, you know, screwing mm -hmm. around, <laughs> playing ticket. Right. And I almost said a street name. Tim would <laughs> come in. <laughs> You're like, Derwin, what are you doing? <laughs> I got to use this professional name. Right, right, uh, right. Right. And he would come by. That's how I knew of him. And, and that's how I was oh, okay, fine. You know, so, uh, so I knew him. And so uh, it was the Schomburg show. Mm hmm. Uh, and this is when Black had first come out. And I had done this uh, Luke Cage, this picture I called the Marvel, it was Luke Cage, Storm, and Black Panther. You can go and look it up on my Facebook page if you want to see it. And I was there sitting at Paris' table because I had a show in Long Island I had to do. So right. I said, okay, I'll come. 
drop off this. Paris said he'd sell it. That's fine. And then I'll go there. Paris is late. I started running his table, right? <laughs> I saw, I saw, almost said it again. <laughs> I saw it too. <laughs> and I was like, yo, I, this black thing is good. I understand the frustration. I get it, yo. You know, and not to be too big. I was like, who's, do I got to suck to get on this job, <laughs> right? right? And he was like, hey, now, right, right? <laughs> uh, no, he was being him. And then I had the most, I've had the most insane reaction to that new kid picture. People were running up and they wanted to take pictures of me. He says, clear, right? He says, how's your time looking? <laughs> you know, it was one of those things. And right. I, sent them, I sent them, a, you know, a couple of test pages, like, you're hired. And that's how I got on that book. And since then, I've done a couple small little anthologies, eight page stories, four page stories here. Um, and right now, I'm doing, we did black, we did black AF. I did full, that one full color. Uh, now we're doing white, and I'm doing uh, working on this thing for Utterly Ridiculous Productions. It's about it's a comic <laughs> about cows. Okay. Go to UtterlyRidiculousProductions.com. You can see all, right? <laughs> all the work. It's cows. It's mm -hmm. cows. And um, it basically, though, it's about a farmer, and he has a cow, and his cow has delusions of grandeur. Right, so okay. and she's in love with the farmer, and so the cow sees herself as like this beautiful cow maiden, right? Mm. So lots of anthropomorphic animals going on and stuff like that. That crowd's gonna love it. Um, so and Paris is drawing that. I'm slated to help them with the new devil. That's Paris' other project. I'm also on Corrupt from Spectacular Inc., and I'm getting some pictures from that tonight. So. Yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. You're getting around. So let me ask yeah. you a question. Uh, all right. So I, I've seen black. Yeah. Um, waiting on white. Yeah. Um, I know Jamal. Oh yeah. I've known Jamal. He went to school with my wife, so you know I, I met wow. a lot of people through. Yeah. 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 So I, I've known him a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm old. Long time. Yeah, so you know. <laughs> so um. So what's the process? I mean, uh, when when you get paid, obviously you're getting digital files, right? Yeah. So I mean, yeah. what's the process when you get a page? Do you get a script to go with it to set yeah. settings, so on and so forth? You know, what's your process? So basically, I'll get the pages from uh, Jamal, and they'll be inked uh, and pencil. I honestly still to this day, I don't know if he's inking himself. They got another inker. I don't know. Uh, but mm -hmm. they're inked, and I'll get it. I'll request the script, and I'll get the script, and I get the character designs, so that I have a, a basis, and it makes it easier to go. And then I just do it as if I was coloring. But mm -hmm. what I do is I just go in and I put his line work. There's a trick in Photoshop. You can separate, you can copy the black lines without getting the white. And I make that layer, I call it the inks layer. Then I make a layer underneath that, it's called my shadows. And that's when I just go in and do the shadows in gray tones and stuff like that. And that's just how my brain works. And what I try to do, and then I'll, after I do the shadows, I'll do the tones. And one of the things they liked about me is that, that I gave everybody all the different individual skin tones. I didn't use one tone fits all. Mm -hmm. And also, I understand that black and brown skin reflects light, right? <laughs> yes. uh, this is actually a really good book, and I can't for me, uh, but it's a good book about that, talking about how, how you're supposed to light black people, you know, and you have to, mm -hmm. there's a certain way you have to do it. Um, also, dark skin brown people, the same thing. We reflect. That light, right? Um, mm -hmm. And they, they like that. Um, but I try to make sure everything's distinct. And I, so I was doing the first issue and I was really nervous. And then I said, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have fun with this. I'm going to play around. And there was a couple of fight scenes. I said, no, I'm going to throw some speed lines in. I'm going to throw some weapon swing arcs. And I said, you know what? Every black and white comic always looks like you can't tell if it's day or night. And I said, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna make this night scene, and I'm gonna make this a day scene, and I'm gonna make sure you can, you know, I use the, I use a lens flare. Uh, I, I'm not, I use a, I use the airbrush with white on it, and that makes it look like it's a bright light, right. you know. And I play, and I just have fun with the lighting. I always think, if this was going to be turned into a movie, mm -hmm. uh, the cinematographer and the lighting director. I want to give them something to go off. Of. I want them to go, oh, so this is what he meant there and meant there. And also, I like to do, when I do special effects, I like to do a lot of goal effects and stuff like that. People seem to like it, you know? So okay. I don't just want to do that. In Japan, it's called omake, which means managing the whites, white spaces. Mm -hmm. And you uh, and so you incorporate the white of the paper into the artwork itself. 
Right. In in Japan, you know, they use a lot of screen tone, right? The zipper mm-hmm. tone. Right. They they did it because necessary. Now you're seeing a lot of people going away from zipper tone and just mm-hmm. using great tones. Like you look at One Punch Man stuff. Um, right. it, you know, the more modern, more computer approach stuff like that. Because people they understand is um, okay. This is a, a slight segue. Is like I I remember I entered back when uh, Tokyo Pop was a thing. Right. I entered their Rising Stars of Manga contest, right? Mm. Didn't win. It's been fun. Yeah, yeah, and then I win. <laughs> I heard. <laughs> I heard. Good thing you didn't win. <laughs> I heard that Tim was telling you about that. I was like, wow, man. <laughs> on your feet, what you want? You what? You know, so. A lot of people got burned. Wow. But mm-hmm. I remember I went to a port when I was in, you know, San Diego. I went to the portfolio view and they loved my stuff. But I remember, you know, the lady interview, interview she said, yeah, but you use too many digital techniques. It doesn't look authentic. And I'm like, you're fetishizing it. You're fetishizing okay. the process. They do it because it's expedient, not because mm-hmm. it's, it, like, it looks a certain way. I mean, there's something to it, but yeah, but no. If they could use this, they'll do that. That's the whole point. And I tell, I tell people, I tell my students, that's the biggest thing is most people, when they'll do a Japanese style, picture is they fetishize it and mm-hmm. they fetishize the Japanese aspect of it. So it's like I say, um, you got a scale of one to 10, one being the worst, 10 being the best. Some people think that you could take a three, a picture that's a three, but because mm-hmm. it's Japanese style, oh, suddenly now it's an eight. Like, no, 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 <laughs> still a three. Right. that's right. still weak as F, right? Mm-hmm. And to me, a good picture, good illustration, good drawing is universal. And it's got to have a strong structure. So, but I always told them, like, I, I'm a kid's first first day of class. I say, look, you know what manga means? It means comics, dude. That's all it means. You know what they call this in Japan? They call it anime, right? And they go, what? <laughs> and I told them, you know, about Karl Marx and, you know, and mm-hmm. um, and Osama Tezuka and, you know, and they call, like, oh, you know, the guy who, you know, H to Oda learned from uh, one, uh, one Piece. He learned to draw by watching Tom and Jerry cartoons, right? <laughs> And yeah. they go, what? And I'm like, yeah, there really isn't this East versus West thing that you, but you know, people are trying, right? right? When we were coming up, it was, I don't like the Japanese stuff. I only like American stuff. And mm-hmm. now it's reversed with the kids like, well, I don't like the American stuff. I only like Japanese stuff. Mm-hmm. And I remember I've been, I've been teaching for a while now. Like this is my, this is my 13th year. And literally my first group of students didn't want to do Anything with superheroes, they hated it until Marvel vs. Capcom 3 came out. They mm. suddenly they loved those characters, <laughs> and it was 22 because I would keep trying to teach them anatomy. They didn't want to learn, they didn't want to draw muscle characters, so they would, be, they would try to draw Hagar and Captain America. They would get the faces right, but the bodies, <laughs> <laughs> right? So you didn't listen to me, learn yeah. hey, you learn that anatomy exactly. Um, mm-hmm. well, I'm sorry, I got off, I got off, I got no, that's to. fine. Um but yeah, and so okay, so back to talking about yeah, and so mm-hmm. and I said, you know what? That's that's fine. You you say that. I'm a I'm gonna do this. I'm not gonna go out by twelve dollars a page for the back then it was twelve dollars, that was about twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was you expensive. Know? Yeah, I'm like, no, forget that. I'm a starving artist. I'm good, dog. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. now we got copy copy tools the best thing ever. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> and then the disc stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so I'm like, oh, I'm sad. Uh, but yeah, and then I had to make my, I made my own custom um, Zoom lines and stuff, and mm. you know, those, all those kind of assets. Right. Uh, but that that's pretty that's pretty much it. It's just um, getting to that point. You know, yeah, like I said, you know, uh, I'm glad I didn't get, I did, glad I didn't win. I entered the first time. I entered twice actually. Neither times. I mean, I was like, oh, it's whatever. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna break those comic books one day. That's fine. <laughs> you know, I don't need that. But I, I've heard, and that to go into a whole conversation about the industry itself. Right. And for me, the her- next hurdle was first you got to get the skill, then you got to get the business acumen, right? And then you right. learn the hard way that this is a business, man. This mm-hmm. is hardcore getting money. How do you get this cash? And that's mm-hmm. a a wider discussion in general because it seems that most of the same industry has seemed to have forgotten that. You know, now it's like, oh, now screw the fans. No, those guys pay. They 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 pay us, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they feed us. 
<laughs> yeah. So how are you saying screw the fans? The fans are talking, no, no. But th without them, we're out of work. You know, right. we're just doodling in our basements, right? You know, and mm -hmm. I'm lucky, uh, knock on wood, that I make my living completely from art, one in one way or the other, Be teaching, freelance work, comic work, stuff like that. I don't have to go and get in the I, I You know, I would if I had to, but luckily, I don't have to right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's it. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> No, that's good. Yeah. So, um, not to harp on. All right. So, are you done with? Uh, so, you're done with with white at the moment, or are you no. still working on it? Uh, I just I'm one page away from getting issue uh, four done, and then it's on issue five. And okay, I'll be getting those pages probably starting next week, and I'll get those out. Um, Sarah, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. I'm taking so long. <laughs> I want to get it faster. Uh, I'm working. I, I had to. I left the city when the quarantine happened. Mm -hmm. I did not expect to be where I am for two months. If I had known I'd be this long, I would have brought my computer with me. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm kind of working on a potato, right? <laughs> <laughs> where I'll draw and I got to wait for it to render the oh. stroke. Oh, yeah. Oh. Let's put it like this. Anybody who sells a computer with four gigs of RAM on it nowadays needs to be shot because you can't do anything four gigs of RAM. You can bring right. Yeah, Photoshop, Windows needs 1.3. Photoshop needs like eight. It <laughs> needs like seven or eight. Mm -hmm. so I started experimenting with Psy because it uses less. And it's, it's all right. I mean, I, I just got to sit down with a little bit more. I even started using GIMP because I have to teach online class. I need to share screen mm -hmm. and I have enough RAM. Wow. Uh, it's, it's a very slow process on this machine, but it's getting there. Um, <laughs> I might be going back the week after the next. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Going. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll start opening up the city again. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, no. yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully not too soon, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a whole other conversation. But uh, yeah, so basically, after issue five, white wraps and then be gray, <laughs> right? <laughs> Who knows? Black, white, gray. Sure, yeah. why not? I love working with them. They're great. It's it's. I'm the I'm the new guy. I'm the young guy on the team. Everybody else is like from Marvel or DC, so I'm just like. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, right, right. Sarah, the editor, she edited Injustice for Christ's sake. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. Oh, she's serious, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, she really went to bat for me and fought for me and stuff like that. So I was like, thanks, I really appreciate it. That's my thing. I'm I I understand that you don't get anywhere in this world without the, without people to help you. You know, right. and, and too many people forget that. Mm -hmm. Nah, nah. It's like no. I, I remember. I remember everybody. I remember, like I said, when I was in high school, I was I was cutting school. Told you that kids don't cut school. And I was going to combo convention, and I'll never forget. I met Paul Chadwick, you know, the guy did concrete, yeah. Yeah. and he basically took my drawing pad and he wrote like everything you need to do. Da, 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 da. So I really want to meet him and be like, look, thank you so much for that. that <laughs> It's such a big impact influence on me, uh, you know, and it's it's really cool. That's the best part of this job is getting to meet your heroes, right. right? You know, and getting and just getting that not even validation, but it's like, damn, you know, it's like wow. And that's also it's very surreal going from I want to be this to now you are this. Mm -hmm. Now what are you gonna do about it? Right? right, and then you got to start. Now I'm like, I gotta have a plan for what I want to do the next five years. What do I want to be in ten years? Do I want to, you know, retire? Am I gonna draw the rest of my life? What's gonna happen? You know, I don't want to be like those poor, those poor dudes from, you know, the old guys that are at New York that were at New York Comic Con every year, and that's all they had, right? You know, right. was like drawing, drawing those few things there, and I'm like, yo, I gotta leverage this into some money and plan for the future because I'm going to get sick. I'm going to get, I'm going to get old one day and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be able to do this. Um, and it happens to way too many people in this industry because there's no retirement plans for us. Right, you know? exactly, yeah. And I'm learning the hard way that, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of abuse, you know, like mm -hmm. I, I learned that the standard is to tell you, you suck. <laughs> You know, it's like, oh, you suck, but I might have something for you. You know, let me see what's over there. Right. You know, under you know, undervalue yourself. <clears throat> let 
like the listener, uh, when we first met, yeah, I got some bad advice on that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. he, he asked me to do a cover, and I was like, okay, so I asked my friend, and I was like, dude, uh, well, how much you know? He's like, oh, charge this much. That's my, nah, nah, nah. dude, okay, so he's been nominated for <laughs> so he can charge that much yeah so and but that's that's how it is and that's the real trick i'm trying to master now is the business side right Right. uh i wouldn't mind my original plan was i wanted to add it was a at plan a was i get i work at marvel to dc and then i become an editor because that's where the power and the money is right right i do that and that's like 10 years from now. Mm. Doesn't like this gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> right? The way and things are moving. Part, it's the, the way the industry is going, right? Who right. knows, right? Plan B was I would try to get a good run on a like a top tier book, you know, and get those royalties mm. forever. And then the fans take care of you. You know, I look at the old timers and their fans, like they go out and then I do like a thousand dollar commissions and stuff like that, mm. right? Right. Plan C is I just hop on a bus and go out to California and like I I, I want to work you know get a job in a movie production because my other dream job was to work for Lucasfilm I really wanted to go work in a production office there it's a mm-hmm. bunch of office excuse me uh eh, you know life happens uh, so those are that's Plan A Plan B Plan C you know I don't have a Plan D yet but yeah mm-hmm. gotcha yeah. yeah now yeah I mean. I mean that that's yeah it's it's a tough business i mean i've been in it but you know i'm on the outskirts i'm all yeah. the way at the peripheries you know i'm I'm an independent publisher so i'm like i'm like just i'm just here <laughs> you know no, you chose that route you didn't you choose you were like now nah, yeah yeah because y'all crooks <laughs> yeah i i did because you know i had my opportunity in the 90s i wrote professionally for about three years okay and at that point because i did tenchi Muyu. yeah i remember you coming there. yeah right. Right. I did La Blue Girl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so yeah, like I said, I was like, oh yeah, I got some experience there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, was- you know, I did Phantom Quest. I did that one issue of Phantom Quest Core. I did Ixir okay. 3. Yeah. You know, and I was just like, all right, well, you know, I could pursue this. Right. Because I was hanging out with some, uh, some, mm-hmm. some artists who were working at these places. Yeah. And then I was just like, I really hate working for other people. Hmm. I hate pitching. I hate pitching ideas. Like, you know, I hate writing them. I I was like, you know, give me the damn job. And if (laughs) I suck, if I hand you a script and it sucks, tell me, Jose, you suck. Um, Go die. Don't ever, don't ever darken my doorstep again. Yeah. Then I would just be like, "Mm, okay, thank you. (laughs) You know, (laughs) just go away. So I was like, I was like, I, I just can't do it. So I just do it for myself and I just have my day job. All right, but this is about you. This is about you, sir. Why? Why are we talking about me? We're talking, talking about you. Well, well, I feel I feel sort of the same way. I mean, I don't mind working with people. You know, I'm like, look, the job is a job. It really, really is. I, honestly, there's a mantra I have: a step you pay, right? And it sounds really mercenary, but it's what keeps me focused. You right. know, like we're artists, we work from home, and if you don't watch yourself, next thing you know, you're playing video games all day long, you watch TV all day long, you're screwing around all day long, but you gotta keep some focus. So I try to, I'm always like, need money, need money, how do I get money, how do I get money. Now people, I get a lot of people hand me scripts, stuff like that, and I don't, I'm like, Look, how much does it pay? <laughs> you know, right. I'm like, no. straight up, before I even, before I even read this, how much money are we talking? And for like, oh well, you know, this is for blah blah. And then bye. You know, oh, you know, mm-hmm. some money in the back end. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, you better have a damn good pitch to make me yeah. sign up for something for that. Because I, I literally had a guy. I, oh God, I had this one dude who <laughs> asked me, "Can you draw this character for me?" And this was first starting out, right? So I'm like, right. you know, okay, every artist out there, I hate to tell you this. You will be drawing for free for the first like five years, right? <laughs> You're gonna draw for free. Deal with it. So right. I was like, okay, fine, I draw for this dude, right? So I, I drew a picture for this dude. So he's like, I'm such a huge fan of yours. Can you draw me another picture? And I'm like, okay. Well, it's gotta be of this specific character. And I'm like, okay. Is it your character? Yes, yeah, my character, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm drawing a character, and I realize it's a it's a free, it's a public domain character. I'm like, 
You know, I'm giving that look. And he's like, you draw one more character. It's, just, it's another public domain character. And I'm like, right. hey, I mean, what's going on here? Oh, I'm, I'm publishing my own fanzine. Mm. Really? Really? And I'm going to put your work in it. Oh, were you going to tell me that? Oh, it'll be great exposure for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you want me to draw these free, these public domain characters, and you're going to sell it in your fancy. But right. and, and you even ask me, you say, can you do me this favor? Right? Mm -hmm. That's what you have to deal with. And the guy don't be like that. I was like, yeah, I'm like that. Click. You know, I just. Mm -hmm. On Facebook and everything. I said no, and to this day I've got the pictures. I had I, I had drawn everything except this character had two guns. I didn't draw right. two, guns. and so the pictures <laughs> would never be incomplete. I'm like no, no son, no, right? And it, the dude was would bug me like everything. Is it done? 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 Like I got fair work here. You're a right. favor. I'll do a favor, but guess what? You will be after I take care of the people that are paying my rent. <laughs> you know exactly. Um, yeah. One of the one of the things that people misunderstand about exposure uh -huh. is that you die from exposure. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> is, you will die from exposure. Let me go to my landlady and be like, "Look, here's my exposure for the month." <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, yep. you go. Can I eat this exposure. You know what, what's the right. Problem? And you get. And I, I've had people. And it's it's the weirdest thing, right? You're gonna go through this like when you're first coming up. Um, people ask you what schools you go to, mm -hmm. and you'll get accused of being greedy when you ask for money. Then you mm -hmm. literally cross this line where no one cares where you went to school, right? <laughs> they just like, right. this is true. Good. I yeah. never get really asked that anymore. Never, right? Mm -hmm. I got asked that constantly um, when I first started out, and no one and, and no one ever says, "Oh, that's too expensive." Now they okay. Then they go, all right, that's good. Mm -hmm. and you go take that money, right? And they give right. me that money, and. Mm -hmm. That's again. It's a it's a threshold. It's, it's not even about being good per se, because that that's subjective, right? Being good, right. That's I, always it. I I believe that it's your work is professional quality, right? right. That's the the threshold there because yeah, a certain are, level of I, consistency, right, right, mm -hmm. and you know, and do you have a thing that makes people attracted to your work? Because that's the main thing is, and I tell kids this all the time: you cannot. Develop a style until you master the basics. You have to master right. the basics, develop a style. My style is a very hybrid style because I grew both Japanese stuff and American stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm going to take what I like from both and I put them together. And a lot of Capcom goes, I used to the pause, you know, Speed Fighter, and I would like, oh, that's how they did that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, and those are choice, you know, styles of fancy work from mistakes we make on purpose. So I do that. Uh, but yeah, back to the, that, back to that aspect. And, it's just again. I'm still getting used to sitting down at the table with the other guys from Marvel, right? And mm -hmm. sitting there and going and having everybody just like, "So what you working on?" And I'm like, "Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, like, oh, I'm working on this, this, this. Oh, okay, you know." I, I had mm -hmm. Bob come. So what are you doing for Marvel? He literally said that to me. So what are you doing for Marvel? I was like, "Jeez, I gotta get on that, man." <laughs> I really, I really, uh -huh. Like I'm, I'm not getting any younger. It's time, it's time to move on that, you know. And I want to do it just to say, I, you know, like I said, my plans. And I'll say, I just, I, I work tomorrow. I work tomorrow. I work for DC. Right. It's that simple. But I'll, I'll work pretty much if you pay me. And the the only things I won't do is I don't want to do porn, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have any problem with it. I just don't want to deal with the baggage that comes with that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what. So my first cover in Japan, I told you for Beast Works, it was anthropomorphic animals. Right. And I brought that back, and I had people tell me, "Oh, you do that so well. Don't ever try to draw anything else. Watch me, right?" But then mm -hmm. I started getting the request, and I was like, "You know what? I just don't want to be. I have no problem Pigeon with that crowd. Right. right. I just don't want to be that because I mean, there's certain artists that worked on certain X-rated books, and mm -hmm. then they went over to work at DC. You know who I'm talking about? I don't right. Have to say and they're still dealing with that from you know right. 20 years ago. It's like people don't let you, they don't let that go. It's like, look, mm -hmm. that was a, it's a paycheck, right? Right. Exactly. Um, and again, that's my thing is like, I just, I'm like, I use that to motivate me to keep me focused. The F you pay me, F you pay me, I need money, I got money, this is my money, I got it. Where's my money? How do I get my money? How do I get more money? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not. You know, I'm I'm low rent. I'm low. I'm low right now. So I'm like, look, I'm not talking to you for less than three figures. 
I want to be that guy. Like, I'm not talking for less than five figures, less than six figures. You know, mm-hmm. that's when I'm good. It's like, okay, fine. You know, that that's when that's when it's good. Right. And again, financial planning. But right now, the comics industry is in such a weird state. It is a you very know, bizarre state right now. We don't mm-hmm. know what's gonna happen next. We don't know. What, I mean, there was that big call a couple of days ago. Um, mm-hmm. All the print with Diamond, other guys there, and no yep. industry guys showed up at all. Right. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you mm-hmm. guys. That's your livelihood if you care. <laughs> you know, I would have been there. I didn't know about it until afterward, you know? Right. Um, and there's some, here's the thing, right? They complain that the books don't sell mm-hmm. and that print is dying. And then you look at Naruto. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's selling how many copies every month? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's every month, it's on the New York Times bestseller list. And One Piece, all those, those books do sell. So what is it? What's that? And what you find is I've been to, you know, I, I've talked to other artists and we're all kind of saying the same thing. Like, look, things got to change and you have to try something different. You got to do something different. You know, I don't want to mm-hmm. burn any bridges here or anything like that. But you know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's in general, it's. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't mind burning those bridges. Most of those books <laughs> suck. And That's yeah. the problem at Marvel and DC. Most of those books are garbage. Yeah. Yeah, they're uh, bad. Sturgeon's Law rules. Yes. Ninety-five percent of everything is sucks. Yep. Okay. Oh, now, yeah. as yeah. creators, and yeah. I and I'm included in this, uh-huh. I have to make sure to try yeah. to get into that five percent. Yes. Okay. You, do it. you know, and the first thing that you do, you do that. Listen to your fans. Don't listen to Twitter. Listen no. to your fans. <laughs> <laughs> guys on Twitter don't buy comic books, right? No. We've proven this. Yes, they don't buy comic books. They don't buy movie tickets. They don't buy merchandise. They don't buy Star Wars. Mm-hmm. That's right. simple. Listen to the people that do buy. They have that. You know, there's this whole big backlash against fans right now. And somebody reminded me today. It was like it was fans that saved Star Trek, gave Star Trek its third season, which led it going to syndication. Right. And, you know, which led it lead on to being named. You know, named the Special Enterprise. And it was mm-hmm. fans that got. The movies made, and it was fans that got next gen made, right? Then it right. became a business. Then we got, you know, Deep Space Nine, something like that. You know, the corporate thing, but it was the fans that got there. It was the fans that kept Doctor Who, the magazine, going for twenty something years, right? It was fans that kept Star Wars going, and it's the fans that that they feed you, they clothe you, they house you, they take care of you. So the least you I'm not th- I'm not saying you don't completely give them everything they want because you, you don't have a book there, right? Right. But, but I use Toriyama from Dragon Ball as a perfect example. A lot of people don't know this. He hates Vegeta. He hates okay. him. He does not see the big deal about the character. And mm. Vegeta was supposed to die. In the first fight when he shows up and fights Goku, he's trying to get his spaceship and Kuriden, I use the Japanese pronunciation. Sorry, guys. <laughs> right? <laughs> Kuriden is behind him with Yajinobe's sword, and he's supposed to kill Vegeta. The fan mail came in. Mm. And Vegeta, since then, has consistently, except for like two years, been the most popular character in the entire series. Right? right. People love that character. They love the journey he goes on. They love the attitude. People like the character's bad attitude, right? They identify with the, atti- the atti- bad attitude more than the goody two shoes. That simple. Mm. And so Toriyama abused Vegeta. He abused him big time. <laughs> That's why right. he's so messed up in the show. Because he's like, I, whatever, man. <laughs> but he knew <laughs> the fans want this guy. Right. I got to give him this guy, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And all you Piccolo fans, Piccolo's his favorite character. You know? mm. And he just wishes Piccolo's more popular so he could put him forward more. But right. that's the trick. It, like you notice, but... Um, was it either? It was either a tale of two cities, great expectations, right? Considered well, uh, was uh, a great expectations. Okay. Considered one of the best novels in the English language, mm. and Dickens didn't write it as a novel. He wrote it as a periodical in his newspaper. Right. And he would put out a chapter a week, and every mm-hmm. Sunday morning, his paper would come out with a new chapter. He didn't write the chapter until Saturday after he read his family. And he would go, okay, uh-huh. what do you want to see? Mm-hmm. And That's interesting. The trick is that you look at what the fans want and you tie it, you balance it with your own artistic uh, needs, right? Mm-hmm. And, then, that's, and that's being a commercial artist. 
If yeah. you are a fine artist, you can do whatever the hell you want. Mm -hmm. You are a fine artist. You can take all the time you want. You can draw whatever you want. You can paint whatever you want. And you can say, screw it to everybody. You don't understand this. Well, you're, you know, you're a Philistine. And, you know, you can be very highfalutin and oi polloi, right? Mm -hmm. But you are a commercial artist. Your job is to balance your artistic integrity with the needs of the project and the demands of the fans. The demands of the customers. It's that simple. And what we have right now is a lot of people who have forgotten that they are working on commercial art. Right. And they think they're working on fine art. They think it's their own personal project. And what really pisses me off is if you wanted to work on a personal project, you want to be, then don't use an established brand. Right. The only reason you use the established brand is because you want that built-in market base. Mm -hmm. you, know, you want that audience. So don't tell me that, oh my God, these guys, they, if you don't care about the fans, then don't use don't use the Star Wars. Don't use Spider Man. Don't use just make up your own thing, and I will support you one thousand percent. I think one of the big issues with that is that these people that come in to really work on those books, they're just there for a check. I mean, they're yeah. just like they're just there, and they're just like they've gotten themselves up to a certain level. However, yeah. they had to get there, whatever they had to do, and um, they're like, "That's it. I'm cashing it. I'm cashing in." You understand? It says. Yeah. And they just coast. And that's yeah. the problem. You know, they, yeah. they just coasted. Right. Yeah, so my thing is that, that kind of contrast my, myself. I'm very mercenary, but mm -hmm. also I value the fans. You know, and that and that's the difference. Like I said, I agree with you. They don't care about the fans at all. They don't care about the brand. They don't mm -hmm. care if they leave it in ruins and flames behind them, walking away, yeah. talking to the match over their shoulder. Like, not my problem, bro. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one, I forgot who it was. Uh, it was might have been John Romita Sr., Right. And he was talking with you know his son. This is back before 9-11. And he said that when you work on Spider-Man, Thor, Captain America, Superman, Batman, you have to understand is that you're a custodian. Right. You know, you can put your mm -hmm. own stamp on it, but you're there to carry it mm -hmm. for the next person. Because what you're messing with, and a lot of people don't get this. And if you look at the video game industry, you're seeing a little, it's, it's very interesting. Um, you're dealing with culture. Mm -hmm. You know, we always say that everybody complains about Superman, about how he's overpowered, stuff like that. Make a bad Superman movie and watch the death threats you get. <laughs> you know? <laughs> With, go, go watch the Superman movie and whereas Marvel movie, everybody's cheering and stuff like that. Bad movie, people cheering. Superman movie, everybody's mm -hmm. in silence because they're in church. You know, right. their reverence for that character is insane. Um, so in the video game industry, for example, I use that when you get uh, Capcom did it with, if you're familiar with the game Devil May Cry, Dante, right? Mm -hmm. And they did this reboot called DMC that was really not well received. And, you know, the same thing happened with Sonic the Hedgehog and, or again, better, back in the early, around 2000, Nintendo made a system called the GameCube and they had made these two really mature Legend of Zelda games, Majora's Mask and Link, uh, I forgot what the other one was. I'm so bad. I'm bad with names. <laughs> but then when they made the GameCube, they made a new cell shaded younger version of Link that looked like a kid, a cartoon. And okay. people hated it. Mm. And it was because he was an icon. Mm. So what, what happened is Capcom learned this with Dante, something like that, is that th to them, they're just making a video game. They didn't realize that they had created cultural icons, cultural touchstones that people grabbed onto. Sega learned the hard way with Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, one does not F with an icon, right? right. They, you know, you, you change it at your peril. So that's, they have had to learn what <laughs> some guys in comics know is that these are icons. I, Don't keep them I, I think, but yeah. I think Disney is learning that on Star Wars. Yes. Big time, big, 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 big time. Because um, I hated all three of those movies so much. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I liked Rogue movie. One. It's the only one I liked. It was the only one, right? It was yeah. the only one, and it was very forgettable. I can't remember any character names, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we do remember Darth Vader at the end. Yes, we do, because that was badass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, uh, so, like the Force Awakens, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I've seen this movie before. What are they doing? Oh my god! And I and I said, because I'm 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 like this is my relationship with um, the prequels is didn't like the fan of the the Phantom Menace, 
Right. I like Attack of the Clones. I love Revenge of the Sith. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it has flaws. I don't care. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. right? It has some great moments in it. Hayden Christensen went in there. He did his thing and stuff like that. Um, and so, and what I always said is that Lucas, every movie, tried to bring something new to the franchise. In. He oh, tried yeah. to bring something new. These guys, it's too safe. It's corporate. They're not going to try anything new. It's just going to be mm -hmm. a rehash of what came before, what came before, what came before. And yep. the fastest way to, I, I got into so many arguments over that. And I'm a perfect one. My, somebody told me that Kylo Ren was Anakin done right. I said, really? Wow. I said, why? So why did Kylo Ren fall to the dark side? Oh, he was seduced by the dark side. That's it? He was seduced. That's not how the, anyway, fine. So <laughs> Anakin falls to the dark side. He was born a slave. Had to mm -hmm. live life a slave. Had to win his freedom by risking his life and abandon his mother to go off to become a warrior monk. <laughs> All right? Mm -hmm. yep. and then war, finally finds love, and then she, well, he's like, oh, I'm afraid of losing her, so I'm going to turn to the dark side. That's why he fell, right? right. <laughs> but, you know, Kylo Ren, oh, he, he suffered under the weight of expectations. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Well, yeah. and, and you know this, you're a writer. Your mm -hmm. story is only as strong as your antagonist. Yes. And if your antagonist is not impressive, guess what your mm -hmm. characters are not? They are not impressive. Impressive, exactly. Yeah. And, and people say, oh, he was wounded when he fought Ray. That he was stupid for picking a bad fight. Mm -hmm. He was dumb. He should have known, okay, I can't win this. I'm wounded. I should not go fight this. Let me come back next movie. But no, he goes and he pizza, and then she goes, I'm just like, I literally screamed BS and walked out the theater. <laughs> I'm right. like, the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I'm like, why? <laughs> so <laughs> we can wait. But again, what you get there is it's sort of like this whole let's get rid of these old fans and get in these new fans. But we want the old fans' money. So we're going to trick you into the theater, right? Yeah. We're going to get you in with the name, and then we're like, you know, smack mm -hmm. you off the face. That's why people are so mad because they felt robbed. They literally felt like, yo, you lied to me. Mm -hmm. And then they turn around and say, oh, if you don't, my personal favorite now, if you don't like it, then you're a such and such. You know, you're mm -hmm. a this, you're a that, you're that. Oh, what color are the emperor's clothes? Right? right. That's exactly what that is. You know, mm -hmm. and we've seen it numerous times with the Terminator movie, with Ghostbusters. Uh, Charles Angels, I don't think that counts. Charles Angels, I didn't even know it's come out, right? It was bad yeah. marketing. It was just a bad marketing, and it wasn't it nobody with any. Anyway, that was so. I don't know if that counts. And then they tried to put Birds of Prey versus Sonic. And that, it's like no. My yeah. problem with Birds of Prey was like uh, I drew Harley Quinn in that outfit, mm -hmm. uh, and from the original Suicide Squad because I was doing Eternal Con the year before the movie came out, and mm -hmm. I lost track of how many women were wearing that costume. Oh I, yeah, of course. I yeah. lost count. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I'm going to draw this. I saw a woman brought her eight-year-old daughter dressed up like that. And I'm like, that's my year old. But clearly, people like that outfit. Yes. Why would you change that outfit? Mm -hmm. And the rest of those girls, that's not Black Canary. Right. I don't care that she's whatever. Reason. No, where's her little jacket? That's right. like character Black Canary. Where's her leather jacket? That's mm -hmm. her thing. That is not Cassandra Kane. What did you do to Cassandra Kane? Mm -hmm. Really? That, that that's you you turned no, Cassandra Kane's whole thing was that she's a raging badass who fights as a language, that's why she's dyslexic, and you made her a MacGuffin, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like they did not respect the characters. Mm -hmm. The irony is in Suicide Squad, they respected the characters. The story, I feel, in my opinion. The story didn't support the characters, especially that third right. act kind of falls apart. Mm -hmm. But they respected the characters. You could tell the love and the cast did such an the cast was perfect. You know, I got to watch it with Paris and he'd done some work as Zeus and Friday. He literally the bar scene, he applauded. He stood he stood mm -hmm. up and applauded. And I'm like, that's you don't get any higher praise than that, right? Mm -hmm. true, true. Um, and to go from where you have the utmost reverence for the characters. To where you just like, nah, we're gonna do what we want with the characters, right? Mm -hmm. And it showed, you know. And then they said, oh, men don't like this movie. Turns out more men saw most men saw the movie than women saw it, right? right? So it's just look, if you make 
if you don't respect the characters, the fans are going to see that and they're not going to want let, let you. They don't. They're not going to give you money to watch their icons get disrespected. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. You know, respect. It's and that's what it comes down to. Just respect. Of course. Let me soften that. I mean, um, I'm not putting that on those movies because this is a thing that happens all throughout comic books. Mm-hmm. And it's been happening since the 80s. You know, you get that one great run on a book. Right. And the next writer comes along and he's like, I'm just going to piss all over what that last guy did. And right. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, okay, I'm going to put it out there. Alpha Flight number 23, mm-hmm. John Burns' last, no, 24, John Burns' last issue, and then number 25, the new guy, and it was like, everybody was, was like, huh? Was the new guy Mike Mignola? Because I know they switched. No, no, Mignola's younger. He's younger than that. Mignola oh, okay. um, came along later. I forgot who, the, basically, let's play this. Um, And John Burns wrote in the book. He got right. caught. He was that, he was the short, yeah. right? And mm-hmm. he was supposed to be a guy who was born with dwarfism, but he said, I'm going to be a badass. He was a Wolverine's right. level badass, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Like North Star Aurora. And North Star Aurora had their problems. North Star got her powers changed, but they would touch and make the light and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you had, um, I'll just keep it on that right there. So when the new guy comes along, suddenly Punk isn't a guy who wouldn't let dwarfism define him and but and become a badass. Oh, no, no. He had, a, he was, he had, re- he was a seven foot tall mercenary. <laughs> who released the demon and he and to keep the demon in his body, uh, he had to keep the demon in his body to contain it and it drained his life force and made him short. And I was like, Wow. This is stupid. <laughs> I'm, pretty sh- I'm pretty sure I abandoned the book once Burn left. So <laughs> and it was like you fundamentally undercut this character. You fun mm-hmm. you just, just took every that, that cool defined trade on. And then North Star Aurora, suddenly he said, Oh, even though they touched several times before that, now when they touch they lose their powers. I'm like, but that's not consistent to what we've seen before. And he made all of the changes. And, and oh, and that's when uh, Sasquatch was no longer a gamma experiment like uh, the Hulk. No, no, he was actually uh, the avatar of some god, <laughs> you know, some dark god. And I was mm-hmm. like, this is dumb, right? <laughs> you know, and so it's it's happened. So we've all been there. The new writer comes along. Or you know when Chris Claremont left X Men, he was so salty he tried to kill Magneto off. He's like, oh, I'm kill him. you know, <laughs> right? So I'm gonna get him. Yeah, that's uh, not, not gonna stick, bro. <laughs> or even right. funnier when he came back to do the X Men and he said, "I'm making my own X Men, my own continuity. It's gonna be a continuation of my run of the X Men." And the first thing he did was kill Wolverine and Magneto off. And I was like, "Oh, hell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly. Not a good idea. Yeah, not Wolverine. a good idea." Wolverine's back is so broad is because he carried the X-Men for 30 years. Exactly. It like, wasn't and, it, job, bro. <laughs> and it didn't matter whether it was on the comic books or the movies. He it carried that franchise. <laughs> exactly. All right. So look, man, we're coming on an hour of this, so okay. we're gonna get to wrap up, but I got a couple a couple questions for you still left over. So I got I got two of them. Okay. Now, all right, actually I'm gonna give you a third one. One, mm-hmm. are you yeah. Planning on working on anything of your own creation anytime soon? Yeah. Okay. 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 So it's funny because I, all these years, I had never, I had always, because, you know, I used to I make up characters and I used to do Dungeons Dragons role playing stuff like that. I always mm-hmm. used to test my characters out. And I had always done, they had this really cool super idea, but I said, I'm not doing superhero comic because if you're not working for Marvel DC, you just got to get crushed. You know, mm-hmm. the smartest thing Dark Horse ever did is say, we're not doing superhero. You can't, you can't, mm-hmm. and you do your own superhero, you're automatically competing. I'm not with Spider Man, so I said, you know what, don't want to do that. Um, but now, <laughs> <laughs> now there's kind of a door. So I actually called up an old friend of mine, uh, mm-hmm. and there was an idea we had like 20 years ago, and I said, look, write it up. And he wrote this really kick ass like design document, and I'm gonna start this. So, yes, I will be working on something. Else. I have a couple of ideas. Another one was a zombie comic that I put on the shelf because there were just too many zombie comics out there. Right. right? But now Walking Dead is ended. I might do that. And there's a fancy comic I've been talking about with Buraiden, and it's just I'm not a writer, and Mm -hmm. it requires a lot of heavy writing, right? And I don't trust. It's very personal. I don't trust it with anybody else just yet because you get with somebody Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, no, I want the guys to do this. It's like, all right, don't die. 
Right. Um, but I am working on some stuff of my own. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Now, so this will lead into this next question. Sure. Now, if you had the mm -hmm. choice of yeah. any artist mm -hmm. to do a cover for you, living or dead, doesn't matter. Ooh. Okay. We can just pull that person from the ether. Yeah. 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 To do yeah. a cover for you, who yeah. would you pick? Oh my God, there's too many. There's too many. I mean, I love, I love Sweet Guy. It also depends on what book I'm doing. If I was doing um, like the zombie comic, I'd probably want uh, Otley, the guy who did Invincible, right? Um, Otley, yeah. He's good with the gross stuff and that, you know, he's, he's good with that. Uh, if I was doing a superhero comic, I'd want myself to know. I'd be like, I'm going to do it. But no, honestly, I would get. Uh, I would love to have Michael Ringo do a cover for me because okay. I had his poster. He did it a flash up on my wall for 19 years, and my mm -hmm. flash pictures I watched him, and I, I never got to meet him before he died. Um, I would love to have Kubo Tite do a cover for me, right? And that uh, he is the author of Bleach. Okay, okay. My art style is really heavily. He's the reason that we do so much uh, foreshortening in Japan. You know, he mm -hmm. kind of they call it depth of field. He made it popular so everybody started doing it and right. i will tell you this right now if you read the first half of bleach before he when he still gave a damn right because mm -hmm. he just kind of stopped giving a damn towards the end <laughs> right. his artwork is it blows away anything you see in the animation it, it's mm -hmm. 10 times better than the comic he's he is good also the guy who draws uh yusuke, uh, yusuke murata he does a one he does one punch man he's insanely good um, but yeah, I mean, I would love to see any of those guys do a cover for me. That would be good. Right. Cool. Now, if you got the golden ticket, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. You got the golden ticket. Uh -huh. And they called you up to either Marvel or DC and they said, yeah. Derwin. Yeah. Pick a book, right. character, team, right. whatever. Right. What's the, what's the book? Right. What's the character that you do? All right. The Flash, hands down, is my favorite character. I would okay. do the Flash with a heartbeat. If it was Marvel, I would be like, I'm, I'm drawing a Nova book. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. He right. gets the short end of the stick, you know. And mm -hmm. I, I talked to, I had, I, I talked to a dude who was an editor of Marvel for a long time, and he was like, yeah, Nova's like everybody's favorite character on the down low. It's just he, he just never gets done well. <laughs> right. It never works. Uh, but uh, the Flash in a heartbeat, without even the Flash. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, Derwin, where can people find you? Where can people contact you right. and see your work? Okay. So, the easiest way to contact me is by email. You can contact me at bluehanzo.derwin at gmail.com. Uh, I guess we could put a link in the whatever or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, I have a DeviantArt page. Everybody has a DeviantArt page. Haven't updated it. No one updates it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I update um, my page once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's called madplatypus.deviantart.com because I wanted something random. I figured an angry platypus is pretty random. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's also Blue Hans and Dojo, which I haven't updated in a while either. But mm -hmm. honestly, the best way is email. You can find me on Facebook, Blue Hanzo, Facebook.com, and on Instagram, bluehanzo.derwin at Instagram.com. All right, cool. We'll put those in the show notes for you so people can reach out to you right. and, and you know, start throwing money at you. Yeah, exactly. hope so, man. I need money. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Dude. The virus don't pay. Exactly. Uh -huh. All right. All right so, so, Derwin, this was awesome. Yeah, yeah it was. So, Very thank fun. you, guys. I'll be talking to you all soon. Yeah. This was Derwin. This is JD. We're out. Take care. Peace out. Peace out.